Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video we're going to connect a DC motor kind of directly to the Nexion display. Using the pulse width modulated outputs out of the Nexion display you can't drive a DC motor directly. So I have this small board here that I've got connected in between. These two pins over here, or actually three pins over here, control the trigger and the pulse width modulated that come out of the connection itself. And then there's a ground pin up here. And that's the only connections you need from there. You can run all the power separately over on this side. In our case though, we're going to tie the ground from here and bring it around to the input power. And I'm going to feed the plus 5 volts from the connection itself and then to control a small DC motor. So the power and everything is going to come from the Nexion. Now for a long-term project, I wouldn't recommend this because as I was doing this, I noticed the Nexion was getting just a little bit warm, but it'll be fine for this video. And what you can do is you can just use an alternate power supply for your DC power in your motor, especially if it's under load. I just have a free spinning motor for this example. Now in the Nexion display itself, we have this slider here, and it's just a standard slider. I've stretched it a little bit just to make it a little bit bigger and easier for my fingers to touch and move back and forth. And then we're going to have this number field down here, and it's just going to display the value of the slider. Now if you click out here on the screen itself, and you during the pre-initialized phase, this is where we implement the CFG PIO pins themselves. And the first thing we're doing is pick the pin itself. The ID is the pin number. And in the Nexion display, not every pin can be pulse width modulated. I'm picking six because it's also tied to a light. So if there's a problem, we can investigate it using the light. Now the state is the next step in here. And we're going to select three because that's the pulse width modulated output mode. And unless you're binding this to a button on the Nexion display, which you can't do in pulse width modulated mode, the third one is always just zero. And that's all there is to it. Now we've set up the pin, and now we're going to use the slider to control it. So we'll, we'll click the slider. We're not going to do it on the press. We're going to do the same thing on the release as we do on the move, though. One thing I've noticed is as you move it, when you release it, sometimes it will move just a little bit more, and it won't detect that as a move. So usually whatever I do on, on move, I also do on release. So I've copied the same text on touch release and touch move. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the pulse width modulated output, number pin 6, to the value of HO. And HO is going to be a value between 0 and 100. We're also going to write that value down to N0 so we can see it on the display. I'll run this in debug just so you can see it working. Nope, oh, looks like I need an L there, doesn't it? And now as I slide it, you can see the value there changes. And we're going to send it out to that pin. Now I'm going to upload this and we'll finish it up in a camera view so you can see it functioning. This is that little circuit that I have. And currently right now I don't have the um, connection powering it. So the motor isn't spinning right now. And what's interesting about it is you have two ground pins and two pulse width modulated trigger pins. Well, actually you have three, but since I wired in a header, it blocks the two, um, the two other holes. And so the, for the pulse width modulated line comes in here, and then I have two grounds, because one of the grounds feeds around and goes back into for the power that feeds the motor. And then the other lines go down to this board here. And you can see that I'm using output 6 on that brown wire. And then I've got the ground that's fed up. And then you can see the 5 volts. And when I connect this up, we'll be feeding power to the motor. And hopefully you can see that the motor is spinning. And as I adjust it, faster and then it slows down. Now 
can see that it's not functional all the way down to zero. And then it won't start up until I get it back up to about 50. I should have made the number a little bit bigger. I think it'll come through. And so it is possible to drive a motor directly with the Nexion, although like I said, I don't know that I would recommend it. I think that I would use an external power source, especially if I had a couple motors and I had a wheel, like if it was for a robot or something like that. But as you can see, it's pretty simple to set it up. The only thing we have is in the pre-initialized phase, we have to set up the pin, and you could do three or four of these pins. And then when you move the slider back and forth, you just send the pulse width modulated value that you wanted. Instead of using the slider, we could have this tied to a keypad, and you could click on it and you could change it that way too. There's lots of different ways to use this. In a previous video, I drove a servo, and the Nexion was able to run that just fine. In the next one, I'm going to do a stepper motor, and that's going to require four output pins to control one stepper. Now, I've never done this before, so and I haven't even done it in practice yet, so it'll be interesting to see if it works. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.